Just to run through your uh, your injury situation, please. Um, pretty good. We've uh, Johan will make a decision on because obviously he's uh, or not obviously, but he's fit, but he hasn't trained a lot, so we've got to make a decision with that. Um, the others, um, pretty good. Danny Drink was still behind the curve. He's back on the grass, but it's obviously he's, he's missed a few weeks, so we'll we'll keep an eye on that one. Um, no, we're pretty good actually. We we've come back to a good group again, you know, a healthy group. So we're uh, pleased with that. There's been a bit of talk this week about shaking the starting eleven up because <coughs> your subs came on obviously and, and did a good job for you at the weekend. How big a decision is that? How tempting is it just to change things? Well, I've not been talking about that, by the way, but other people talk on my behalf. Um, but I think I think the truth is, I've, I've mentioned in pre-season, I think we've got a competitive squad. I think year on year we've tried to build that. We, we know we haven't got bundles of money every year to just correct it and, and build it all in one go. Um, we've had to sort of nip away at it every year and, and kind of uh, change and add players where we could. And I think this is a competitive group. So I think any given weekend, I think the, the margins are tight for who we pick. Um, we're looking to pick the right team. Last week was slightly different. It was a tactical change and, and it at least uh, gave us a, a chance to get something from the game. Um, but we're, we're looking for everyone to be ready and I think they are. You know, And I spoke to them today after training because they look ready, you know, no matter who we play. They wanted to be ready to perform and I've been pleased with that. How surprised were you by that Norwich result last weekend? I think it was the story of the weekend. Yeah, I mean, a, a, a fantastic result, obviously. You know, and there's, I think there's always that, you know, be, people mention that Man City may be off colour a little bit. Trust me, it's not easy whether they are or not. You know, the, the top teams are the top teams. You've got to play well to beat them teams. And I thought they, they were excellent on the, on the day, uh, Norwich. We, I've watched some of it then. I've, I've seen it back as well, of course, um, on analysis. And... I think I think what they're trying to do is take from last season and carry it into this season, you know. And I think it's how well that can do over a season. I think they've had a great result. They've had a couple of big results, of course, but that's that's a big, massive result, really, when you beat Man City, particularly at home, uh, at home in front of your home fans. I think a season is where it counts, you know. And I think that will be the, their focus, um, I imagine, anyway. Um, but but for us, it's uh, another good Premier League game. There's a, a clutch of games outside of the top six, which people will consider. A more our market, um, statistically they are, of course, uh, but they're not easy. You know, all games are difficult. So we respect everyone in the division um, and we look forward to the game because I think we've been performing well. We had a, a tough second half on Saturday, uh, last Saturday that was, but I think we've performed well so far this season and pre-season, so I've enjoyed what the, the team's been offering. I'm guessing they'll come here full of confidence, completely boosted by last weekend. How dangerous does that make them, even though they are, as you say, a, a promoted side and maybe the fans were thinking this is a, 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 a three points for us? Well, their fans or your fans? All right, okay. Um, I don't think our fans will be presuming anything. I think they know the realities of the Premier League. Um, I think last year was a good measure of that. You know, our fans, I think, have been very balanced in their view of what we want to do and what we have to do to beat teams. Um, as regarding Norwich coming here, I think, I think, uh, why wouldn't they come here sort of confident anyway? It's early season. I think we've been through it. You know, I, I think your, your confidence remains high regardless early season. I think. I found as the season moves forward, you know, you get beyond game 10 and then it's 15 and it's 20 and all of a sudden, can you keep your levels? Can you maximise your performances? And I think that's the key to it. Um, but that's for them to decide, you know, their challenge. We've been through that period and, and come out of it, um, you know, and gone on to, to sort of stay in the Premier League season on season. But it's not easy. And I think there's a, there's a balance to be found, which is basically moderating them thoughts. You know, can you, are you confident enough from good results to make sure that everyone's feeling well and can go and perform freely. But are you keeping that in check enough, knowing that the next one's never easy? You know, the last one doesn't owe them anything, and, and they'll know that. And uh, certainly we work on that basis anyway. When they're due to the division, how <coughs> much homework do you have to do on them? Well, I think there was a lot of games covered last season anyway, and I, I don't think there's radical change to what they're trying to do. Um, so I think we know some something of them. Um, analysis, you know, it, it changes because obviously... Playing against Man City is a different kind of analysis than playing ourselves or other teams in the division. And so I think I think we try and look at a number of games, a number of different situations and, you know, uh, make what we think will be something that will affect the opposition in a positive manner, of course, and make the players aware for the, the, the side of things when they're, when they're working to try and win a game, you know, and I think... We do. I think we give the players enough. I don't think we, we overthink it and give them too much. Um, we want the players ready to perform. We do trust the players, and I think they will be ready. And in, a, in the bigger picture, is it, is it quite nice that everybody thinks of the defending champions as more or less unbeatable, and they've lost now, so they're, they are only human. For the, for, the, for the wider good of the Premier League, was that actually quite a, a good outcome on Saturday with Norwich winning? 
well, I'm not bothered whether it is or not, to be honest. Um, I just bother about ourselves. You know, it's for others to decide who's who's doing what for what reasons. But I think the one thing I would say that no team's unbeatable. I think we all know that. They've been pretty close sometimes, Man City. I will say that, and uh, Liverpool as well last season. But no, I think I think it's just healthy for the game. I think uh, not necessarily for the division. I think it's always good to see you know the the mixture of, of teams performing in any division. I think it's healthy for the game. Nick Pope looked in really good form at the weekend. How how surprised are you at the way he's very quickly slotted back into that sort of form? I'm not surprised. I think he was very unfortunate last season. We knew that he was fit for the second half of last season. Um, so I, I'm not surprised by his form. I, I think he's a very good goalkeeper. Um, I've been fortunate, you know, the last few years to have a clutch of good goalkeepers and uh, continue to do so. So, but not been surprised. No, he's he's a very very good goalkeeper. I consider. And a win for you on Saturday could take you into top ten. Is that where you've got to be looking this season? No, I think we're looking to build on last season. It was a tough season. I don't, I don't think we've ever got too carried away with the highs and the lows of, of football. Um, but building on last season, I think would be a start and then we'll see that uh, where that takes us. You don't set yourself a target of... of no, I don't, I've never up then. I, I don't think you should need targets. If I'm a player, I want to win every game. That was my mindset and I want my players to have that mindset. Our only target is the next game. We've, we've done well with that mentality. Um, you know, you, you, you're hungry for the next game. You should want to win that. You, once that's gone, that should be parked quickly and you move on to the next one. That was the way I thought about football when I played it. So there's no reason to overthink it when I'm managing it. I want the team to do that. The next one's the biggest game and that's the most important. And you, next time you play Norwich, penultimate game of the season, by then most of your fans will be thinking, hopefully we're safe by the time we go to Carrow Road. Do you start thinking our ambition's got to be a little bit better than that, the bigger ambition? No, it was the same as what my ambition was when I just answered the last question, which was <laughs> the fact is that the next game's the most important one. Um, so it will still be the most important. Do you know, do bigger pictures? And now and again. But not, not in that situation? Sometimes. <laughs> You're uh, seven years in charge in October. Can I just ask you, again, be a little bit more philosophical and reflective? I mean, <coughs> how have you changed as a manager in those seven years? Um, I think a lot of it's subliminal change. I, I don't think you, you don't sit there writing, I personally don't sit there writing notes on myself and considering things. I think you just change with the job and all the, all the different um, experiences that you have while doing the job. You know, there's been so many since I've been here, both on and off the pitch. Um, that I think it's bound to change you as a person, but also your thoughts on on your job and the game. Um, I think I think you it's a, another thing to explain. You just mature into the role. Um, all of this becomes more normalised. You know, dealing with the players becomes more normalised. Some of the challenges of that are you know you still get some things that are out the out the blue and catch you out a little bit. But most things you've experienced. Um, so no, I, th I think you just mould into the job more and more so each season that goes by and, and all the challenges that come with it, like I say, both on and off the pitch. You know, there's a lot more. Um, when I speak to the older managers, they, they always tell me they, and they consider it to be a harder job now. There's a lot more going on than, than just sorting out a team to try and win. Um, but I think, I think in my years of being here and the games, I've enjoyed it and I think I continue to do so. You know, there's a lot of challenges here, that's for sure. It's a hard balance to find, you know, striking up the right... Uh, outcomes on the pitch, the right balance financially, every pound's a prisoner here, that's for sure. So it's finding that healthy balance to keep pushing forward and to keep moving forward. So I've enjoyed that challenge. And I think I've had a, a really, really strong staff and groups of players down the years that have helped with that. You know, it's certainly not a job you can do on yourself, in my opinion. You need a lot of good people around you, and I think I have that here. You seem to be relishing it as much, if not more, <coughs> than day one. Um, I think it's different. I think, like I said, it becomes more normalised. I think it, when I was a younger... I'm still relatively young, but younger in terms of years in management. You know, my first year was just coming out of Watford. And the first couple of years, yeah, everything's new and exciting and, and sometimes hard to think through and to, to process and to make sense of. And as you get more and more experienced, you, you learn how to maybe step away sometimes and just, you know, have a, have a bit more thinking time. And, and I think I've done... That's probably the biggest change, actually. Just... Um, not not being so impetuous to get on with you know sometimes just being a bit more patient and just stepping away from situations and using those around you more wisely so i think that's probably the biggest change actually the more i think about it it's just to step away take a deep breath make sense of what's going on and then rethink it and, and take it forward thank you um after ashley's good start to the season are you <coughs> seeing that he's maybe more than ever a marked man by opposition now um no i don't think so i think i think most people know He's an awkward customer, a tricky player to play against. I don't think that's new to people, and, and certainly not to us. But I don't, I don't think the, I think there'll be enough. Uh, he's been in the, the Premier League long enough now, where people know enough about him. 
Um, but he's still he's still maturing as a player, and he and he continues to do that well. Not just him, you know. I think there's a lot of players here who, who continue to do that, and and that's been impressive for me as a manager who believes in development, no matter what your age is. That's a big thing that I believe in. It's nice to see players continue to actually mature and improve as players right in front of your eyes. I enjoy that side of it. And whereas I know when you're dealing with the opposition, that is one of the ones that you look at the big picture, as as uh, Peter said before. Um, so how do you deal with Timo Puki? Do you make anything special for him? Or No, I think, to be fair to our defensive unit, I played against some very, very good players in the Premier League over these years, and, and he looks a very good player. But the point is, you, you mark some top, top centre-forwards. So, you know, you, you I think we make our players aware of some of the strengths of the opposition, but it's certainly not about one player. You know, they're, they're a decent side, Norwich, without doubt. Um, and they're learning all the time. But when you think about some of the, the powerful teams in the Premier League, some of the centre-forwards, then... I think he's in, he's in good company, but I think he's got to earn his spurs against that kind of company. And our players will have played against some top, top players. But he's certainly looking like a good player so far, that's for sure. Sometimes, though, when they maybe get on a roll and are full of confidence, does it, whereas not the same level, it sort of makes them maybe... In well, the then way. roles stop quickly, you know. They start quickly sometimes, but they can stop quickly. Uh, and just finally for me, uh, just as far as uh, Jeff's performance, his cameo role, shall we say, <laughs> I appreciate, I know you said everybody is in your mind one way or another. But did the change that he made when he came on, did to give you an extra something to think about? I think the things with Jeff, he's, he's underrated in my opinion. And uh, not he, not for us, of course, but I think he can work all across the midfield. He can play him behind the centre forward. He's got a great attitude towards virtually anything. You'll probably throw him anywhere on the pitch and have a right go. And, and I think we know that. And I think he's been a bit unfortunate to be out the side as much as he has done this season. If you look down the past couple of years, he's played a lot under me. Um, on the other hand, you know, there's other players, of course, you know, have been playing well as well. But he, he, there's a few in the thinking, you know, and it's not, it's not really, the thing is, because we had a, a tricky second half last week, it's almost like, you know, I mentioned about change and everyone thinks you're going to change. It doesn't mean I'm going to change it. Um, historically, I don't, I don't change the team that often, as everyone knows. But when I think it's right to change it, then I will do. Um, so, and also, I'll, I'll speak with the staff about it. But it's good to see players like him, you know, knocking on the door and giving them kinds of performance, even though it's only 15, 20 minutes. But that's an important period. To, the more players let you know, you know, remind you of how good they are and what they can do, the more it plays with your psyche in, in, the, in order to pick them. So I think he certainly put himself in the, the thinking, but he's never been far out of it, to be honest. So from just what you've just said then, how difficult is it not to pick him? Yeah, I understand your train of thought. Like all the players, I think there's a number of players here who have shown enough in my time here um, to have that challenge of, of why you're not picking them, you know. Um, but you can only pick 11, and you have to pick the 11 that you think are going to win a game. It's, 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 it's more detailed than that, but it is simple in its form. You know, that's, that's the, the job. Pick 11 that can win a game and then change it when you have to during the game. But you can never decide how the game's going to pan out beforehand. You can imagine it, think it through, and presuppose some things but then football doesn't always work out like that Jordan you obviously we're talking now about the, the three that came on at, at Brighton and when we spoke afterwards you were sort of fulsome in the praise of how they came on and affected the game have you been pleased with the sort of fringe players those not in the 11 in the last couple of weeks since that that Sunderland game where perhaps they, they didn't take their chance in that, that second half yeah I mean the there was a few that did um you know as a manager and coaching staff you look beyond score lines see who was doing what but I think it is fair to say that we've, you know, it is good to see players alive, particularly when they're coming on the field to play. It's, you know, I think it's tough. I think being a sub is actually tough because you, sometimes a game, you can get lost in it. But if you focus on what's going on in the game as you're watching it, then usually your mindset will be right to come on and affect it. And I thought all three did that. And, uh, and we've, we've been, I think we've been strong at that down the years here. You know, when I've made changes, they've often been effective in the fact of their performance, not always, you know, the outcome of the game, but their actual individual performance when they've got on the field of play has been good. Um, so that shows they're, they're on top of their professionalism. You know, they're ready to play for the group. And I think that's a good thing. I guess that's as much off the field in terms of, as you said, then looking at the game and being mentally prepared to, to come on and, yeah, I think I think it's I think there's a challenge. You know, it's not easy for players. You know, and and I think another thing, if you're not picked and and you know we have named the team, and then to get over that disappointment and be ready to play, because the one thing that I know for sure, and the players know this, you know, I spoke about it down the years endlessly. If if you if you're feeling disappointed, you'll show it in your performance. So that has to be cleared. You get rid of that straight away. You accept the challenge of what's coming. And then after the event, we can have a chat. You know, if you're a bit disgruntled or you've, you know, fed up, you weren't playing. But beforehand, don't lock that into your psyche because it will show. And I think they've been really good at that here. They've got on with the performance. And then afterwards, if they've had anything to say to me, they've come and had a word with me. And then we've decided that I was right.
<laughs> Brian Clough at the start You're right. there. <laughs> I didn't just, make that one. <laughs> just as on many the, have, Danny is. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Just on the team news, then you mentioned Danny. Is he a couple of weeks? Is there a time scale? I know you said last week there wasn't so much. Of the no, time no, no. He's just him, back out on the grass, um, literally the last couple of days. So we'll give him time to come over. Possibility of playing maybe a 23s game or behind closed doors game? Uh, not yet. And just lastly for me, Stephen DeFore um, came on and played for, for Antwerp in, over the weekend. Pleased to see him back playing football. As yeah, delighted. Knows, yeah, delighted. I tried to ring him actually the other day. He blanked me though. Um, but no, he's um, <laughs> no. I'm happens. delighted. I'm delighted for him. You know, it's, it was a tough situation, uh, you know, private situation, financial situation from the club's point of view, um, you know, and to find the right balance. But, but ine inevitably we, we attempt over the years, I've been able to do right, the right thing by players when needed. And I, and I think it was probably the right thing overall. Um, but we wish him well. Um, you know, I enjoyed his time here and uh, very unfortunate, but I, I really hope he recovers and, and plays some, some top stuff that he's capable of. Did it, um, did it surprise that. you that he played so quickly given... No, because I think, I think you've, got to, you've got to know the play, you've got to know the demands of the job as well. You know, therefore, the, pr the Premier League's really hard. Physically, it's really hard. So in, in the Premier League, it'd probably been given a bit more time from us to be um, what we'd consider Premier League fit. Um, I've seen Belgian football very technical, don't forget, and often very tactical. So the, the, the volume of literal just, you know, kilometres run would be less generally. Um, and some of the high pride pressing and, and, and high speed running and things like that. So may I imagine they've taken that into consideration as well. Uh, but whatever way it works out, I just hope he does well. Thank you. Guys, you're going to be making um, any tweaks at all to, to the side, to club creation, just because of United's results? Have you changed I the way that you've got the players ready for this game? I don't think because of the results. I think because um, we just know a bit more about them, you know, from the games that they've played this season. Um, from the one-off result, different kind of game. You know, I, I think the mindset's different um, playing Man City. We've experienced that ourselves. Um, so I think more because of the, the, the games we've seen all season, but not specifically because of the Man City game. So could it, could it work in your favour, then being confident from that game, maybe coming in, maybe overconfident? Yeah, I, it can do, it can do. You know, we, we've, we've had them moments, and, and I've had it as a player as well, you know, in teams that I've played in. And, and it, it can be a strange thing, you know, because the... You wake up a few days later and the reality of that is suddenly the next game, you know, and that, all that euphoria and the great feeling of beating someone like Man City is gone. And all of a sudden, you, you know, you're back into the next one. So we'll have to wait and see. Um, I'd, like to, I'd like that to happen. It'd be brilliant if they have a, a bit of a down day. Um, but no, I think, I think our job is to perform well enough that makes them not play well, of course, and then, and then to get a result. So I think we focus on the idea that they'll come up here ready, um, confident, and we've got to play well to beat them. Yeah. Who has the last word in the dressing room before the players go out? Because you always used to have it when you were my captain at Liverpool. Yeah. Who has it now? Well, I'm not shying a word or two, as you definitely know. Um, no, it tends to be me, but nothing major. By then, I've always thought the work should be done. So, simple prompts, simple reminders, but nothing heavy, no big spiel, um, which is unusual for me, as you know, but... No, more of a just a rally cry, you know, to say, you know, we're ready, let's go and deliver. But but nothing, you know, I think the work should be done or our work should be done. The players should know, they should be informed by that stage, um, you know, with the information that they need to go and perform. And then it comes down to trust. I often, you know, I do trust in my players. So we often speak about that, the trust in performance. So we'll see. Thank you. 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 Thank